Hey guys, Mike here from Applied Engineering and Design, and I'm up early today, so I wanted to do a quick little video on thread milling. So I wanted to create a uh, 13 16 by 16 thread. Um, and what it is, is it's a thread that works for uh, U.S. oil filters. Um, you know, if you're building something for a car like an oil cooler or an oil filter relocation device, um, you're going to need to machine this. So, and it's they do make dies for it, but uh, thread milling um, is definitely a great way to do this. It, it's fast. You could you know put it right up in the mill. Um, you know if that's what you got. You could obviously do this in the lathe as well, but depending on what part it is, it may be easier to do it right on your mill. So, let's get started. Uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and draw a hex stock because um, I think I've got a piece of hex that I can. Uh, machine this out of and maybe I'll take a video um, and make a part two of this so we can actually see it machined so uh, what we're gonna do is click the little hex bo button here which I've already done and the center we've got a couple options we got number of sides six which is right uh, circumscribed which uh, inscribed means the circles on the inside so um, your diameter that you give uh, like so for instance if I hit zero right now um, you can see, here, let's change our layer so you can see it a little easier. There we go. Uh, you can see that my point right now, if I hold shift, my point is on, on the point of it, which is fine. So right now I'm actually, by size, controlling the uh, outer, um, outer circle. So if I were to, let's say, for instance, we're doing a one-inch hex. Let's just put one in. We're going to hit enter. And do it so if we go and hit analyze distance and we check the actual size we've got distance of 1.7321 so what that is is I ended up this is two inches point to point so what we want to do is we're gonna delete that let's go back out um, we'll do a little Rhino info here so we're gonna hit circumscribed first and we're going to hit zero again for the center point. And now you can see I'm on the flat. So that's cool. So what we're going to do is if we want a one inch hex around zero, we're just going to put in 0.5 and lock it into place. So cool. And now if we double check our work, analyze distance, flat to flat is exactly one inches. Perfect. So let's extrude this. Uh, we'll make a little piece of hex bar stock coming to perspective. Switch to our surfaces layer. Then what I'm going to do is grab the little gumball here, drag it up, hit control. One way to do it, uh, what we're going to do instead is type extrude curve. That way I can put an actual distance in. So what I'm going to do is, let's see, let's say 1.5. Give us a little bit of room. We're, we're not going to thread it super far down. And if I change this to shaded, we can see that we have a nice solid piece of hex bar stock. Cool. So what I'm actually going to do is move this over to our uh, reference layer. Because this is basically our stock. It, has, it really has nothing to do with what, what we're working on. So um, let's get started setting up the, the machining job here. Uh, so let's add stock. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to right click stock and I'm going to do stock from selection. And as you can see, I needed to select it first. So hit OK, select that piece, right click stock from selection. And what we can do is actually if I turn off that reference layer, but turn on my stock, you can see it's right there. Pretty cool. So as usual, we're going to go ahead and set our world coordinate. We're going to set to stock box. I'm going to center off on it, and uh, I'm sorry, highest Z. So we're going to be right at the top. Hit OK. That moves it down just how we want it. And we're going to touch off off the top of the part like that. And what we're going to do is come down to set up here and add a work zero. Same way. Stock box, highest Z, center. We're going to output a work offset of uh, G54. Cool. All right, so let's get started then. Um, and if we look, if we go into uh, two axis and thread milling, it's looking for a machining region. So we need a circle, a, a point or something. So what we're going to do is we're going to 
switch over to our top view. I'm just going to draw in a circle at zero. Um, I'm just going to make it uh, 13 sixteenths. Well, actually, it doesn't even matter. So, B125. We got a nice little circle there. And you can see it's right at the top. It's actually in my surfaces layer. So, let's move it back to curves. And I get a little anal when it comes to. Uh, making sure my layers are correct, so I, I like to be organized like that. All right, so let's get started then with this thread milling here, and we can kind of see. But um, first thing we're going to want to do is actually cut this down to size. So if I pop open a browser here, and you can see, um, and I use this a lot. So if I come into thirteen sixteenths dash sixteen, which is the thread we're going to make. Um, Usually we're looking for that eFunda website. So if I do thread size, this eFunda right here, you can see it, uh, unified screw threads. So we're going to come down to 13 sixteenths, 16, uh, this external thread right here. And this shows us that our maximum, uh, you know, outer diameter is 8108. So our max major as you can see cool so what we're going to do is we're going to want to mill that down um you know past that as well so i'll this is exactly 8125 um and that's saying max is 8108 so i'm going to go ahead and create another circle and make it actually 8108 and you can see it's it's such a very minute difference. I'm going to select it first. I'm going to actually put it on a second layer and maybe give it a different color, red, bright red, just so I can see it. Um, it's going to be hard to find it anyway. So that way the, I can right come over here, right click, select object, and I got it. So. Cool. All right. So with that selected, we're going to machine this down, just profile it a little bit so we can get down to size. Profile. It's already selected. Tool. We're going to go ahead and do it with a 3A send mill. And I know I have this one. And if I remember correctly, it's tool 6. And it's 3744. About an inch of flute, overall of two. So the four flute, tool six, blood coolant. I guess I copy this over like I always do. Speeds and speeds. Uh, the material I have is 416 stainless, and the closest thing we have is 420. Um, this 200 surface feet per minute is about, about pretty close for it. So I'm going to change the feed per tooth to two thou. And we can leave everything else the same. Hit OK. Save as new tool. OK. Speeds and speeds are already populated. Clearance plane looks good. All right, so our cut parameters uh, leave our stock at zero. Uh, turn on our outside, inside for closed curves, because we know this is a closed circle. And we're going to do the outside. And our cut level. So we're at the top, and we need to pick how far down we want to go. Now, the rule of thumb is about the diameter your thread length so um sure we'll do it about 8125 um we're just basically gonna profile this down uh we, we're not gonna be able to run a lot but uh, 81 thou should be fine it's that's a little high but um you know what let's let's drop this down to like 625 just because the i know for a fact when i make this the uh, work holding isn't perfect on it to, to keep it centered. So uh, we don't want to take too much of a cut. Cool. So now our entry level, or our entry and exit, uh, we can come in from the side uh, and come around the profile and come back out. And then it'll lower again and do the same thing. Um, and I can show you how that looks uh, if we do apply entry level at each cut. And we go in and set our arc fitting. And smooth cut connectors, and if we hit generate, you can take a look at this this uh, toolpath right here. 
So what it's doing is it's coming in, going around, coming back out, and it's going back to the top and back down. Feeds down this yellow, it feeds down to each one. So as we said in our last video, um, it's kind of cool. If we're going to stay on the outside like that, let's turn our skim clearance on to 20 thou. And what that'll do is you can see that it actually stays lower and it's not going to go all the way back up every time. So if we simulate this really quick, It's kind of doing exactly exactly what we want. So um, no big deal. Uh, what I'll do is I'll show you quick. The other option is if we go into entry, exit, and go to a long path 3D, hit generate. You can see that all it really did is it's following into the path instead. So it's going to, instead of cutting first with the outside of the tool, it's going to cut first with the bottom of the tool which is nice too, um, depending on how worn out your tool is. You can see it's kind of just, you can see how it tapers right down. The simulation's quite cool for showing you what to do. And that's just as good, so we'll leave it at that. Why not? Cool, so we've got that. Now, got that set up kind of the way we want it to look. So now what we're gonna do is, all we gotta do is create this, this thread mill operation. So, we're going to go back to program and at this point either circle that we have selected doesn't matter so if we select that and then go into thread milling that drive region is already in there so the cool thing is it actually shows you your in-process stock here um, sort of grayed out because I turned the stock on which is very handy when you're um, not actually working with a model and you're just kind of drawing shapes and stuff to get this get get what you want done um, I do this a lot when I just want to machine something quickly. I don't, I don't bother modeling it. So, All right, so if we go to Edit, Create, Select Tool, <clears throat> we got our tool window here, and we're going to just say 16 TPI uh, thread mill. And paste that over here, blood coolant. And so <clears throat> I, I'm not actually positive what the, the tool is uh, that I've got. So... We're going to open up the calculator real quick. And you can see it kind of hides behind everything. So uh, we need to get our thread pitch, which is going to be 1 divided by 16. So 1 16th, 0.0625 is our thread pitch. And for instance, let's just go ahead and say that it's it's half inch for right now. So in uh, it basically tells you everything you need to fill in here about your tool. Um, the very most important thing is your thread pitch because that's going to control how um, how far it goes down. So let's uh, let's leave everything alone because we're just we're just showing you how you can do this right now. So the the feeds and speeds. Um, you know you still want to set this for the material and and how fast it's going to go around so we want to we want to do it nice and slow so we get a really good finish um hit okay save as new tool okay feeds and speeds should auto populate clearance plane we, we already know what that is cut parameters so this is where it, it gets kind of uh important where you need to set all this so if we go to thread type <clears throat> we set external um, and you can see it, it changes your uh, little diagram here on the right. So external, uh, right-hand thread. And now we just kind of fill all this in. So our thread parameters uh, are major um, or minor diameter. So our major diameter uh, is going to be that 0 0.8108. The thread length is how far down we're going to go. So we're basically we've got we cut down 8125 so let's just say 800 thou and the number of leads is actually our thread length um essentially divided by our pitch here so um if we leave this alone just so we can we can kind of see what it looks like and, and we're not going to touch anything in entry and exit so if we hit generate um, that's obviously not right. So it did one lead, and that's basically one revolution in the full 
the full you know length we did it in here so if we come back to cut parameters so our thread length is we need to know how many threads thread leads in this amount so if we have 16 bring up our little calculator here because sometimes I'm awful at math uh, if we have 16 threads in an inch uh, and our thread length is 0.8 inches we're going to take 0.8 times 16 and we have 12.8 leads in 800 thou so we put 12.8 in there and we hit generate and we can see that it's absolutely perfect it looks exactly what we need it to look like and it's going to create the thing so let's simulate it and see what it's going to look like then it's not actually going to model the threads but you can you can double check that it goes right down to the bottom and and that's pretty much it so thread milling is awesome you know i think it's such a great tool to be able to use in cam software um, rhino cam 2015 uh, does a great job at you know kind of walking you through getting it set up um, i've used older versions uh, of their visual cam software way back in the day and it's come a long way for the thread milling so i'm very happy they've put some time into to working with it um, i'm very excited to see what rhino cam 2016 is all about and i will be at a on a webinar with them next week uh, learning about 2016 so hopefully we will get that software um, very soon as well and we can kind of do a uh, uh, overview for you guys on everything that's new in uh, 2015 so um, that's about it for this tutorial uh, time to go have a little more coffee and uh, I will catch you all you guys on the next video make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel applied engineering and design uh, follow us on Twitter, Applied ENG Design. And if you guys uh, have any questions or want uh, have ideas for videos, uh, feel free to email us, uh, info at AppliedENGDesign.com. Applied and uh, I almost guarantee you we'll have a website up soon with some blog posts and a listing of all our videos and, and everything we can do for you. So uh, we'll catch you on the next video. Thanks, everyone.